I think AI is a defining technology of our times and it's here to stay, it's not going to go away. And you know, if you read the popular or mainstream media coverage, it's so extreme. Either this is the end of humanity or this will just do everything for us and we'll be happier and healthier, etc. So I think, you know, having a nuanced and rational understanding of the opportunities and risks is really important, whatever your field and area. And of course, as a worker, it's important to understand how to leverage AI. We're all less likely to lose our jobs to AI than another person using AI if we don't. People have been trying to figure out how to hire, how to manage our employees for a long time. In my own family, it's across businesses with nail salons, truck drivers, and, and people in big tech. So when we add technology to that, what does that look like? What, what can it amplify? But also, what are, what are issues that might be mitigated um, or, or might come up that we have to think about? People have been thinking about finances and managing money for, for a long time. Uh, and so when we think about that, how do we understand the history of how we've done that in an analog world before we then layer technology on that? And it's especially important with AI and ML, where the speed of which technology is moving and the ability for it to really amplify our work is so high. It's that much more critical for us to understand how we've done the work throughout history in the outside world, outside of technology, and then layer the technology on top of that. I think finance and HR leaders will benefit by basically shifting workers, including themselves, from repetitive, boring, standardized, low-value activities to more intellectually fulfilling and creative activities. The problem is that people won't do this automatically, so you have to manage them and incentivize it to do it. And fundamentally, we need to find ways to reskill and upskill ourselves so that we can really leverage the next phase of AI. Um, I think there is a trust gap, yes, there definitely is. I think there's an, um, a trust gap around, well, how will it impact me? Eh? People think about themselves, yeah? So what about my employability? Will I remain relevant tomorrow? I see all these things happening. So actually showing to people that we continue to invest in them, that we continue to show them there is a place in the organization. We, we've seen that human-machine interaction, you figure that out, you make that work, will actually increase that trust, that's number one. The second thing is also to make it predictable. People need to understand what AI does, what it doesn't, and to what degree it can truly augment their activities. Yeah? And if you actually can explain to people a, a bit of cause and effect, if you want, of these AI platforms that are typically sometimes completely unpredictable, you actually dramatically increase the adoption of these environments. More often than not, distrust towards AI is more a reflection of distrust that exists in an organization than something that is inherently caused by AI. So when you see this parity between how employees, for example, fear AI and how leaders are, or executives are very excited about its opportunity, really this disparity shows or highlights that there isn't alignment in the strategic goals of the business. So you need to address them. These are leadership issues rather than technology issues. There are so many opportunities for organizations, companies, to partner with governments to think about regulation and policy. And we have examples where government regulation around privacy, around safety, have really led companies to think really differently about how they can develop better user experiences, better technology, better cars, better, uh, just different kinds of product experiences that are much better than before we had those kinds of regulation, guardrails, measures to, to consider. It's what we've been communicating to lawmakers, which is in many ways, policy lags behind business when it comes to practices. And so when it comes to, to implementing AI in a thoughtful, responsible way, it's pretty much all we're talking to our customers about. It's all our customers are talking to their employees about. It's all pretty much everyone when it comes to this conversation. In many ways, it's again, a lesson we've learned from previous uh, technological evolutions that, it, that you need to put maybe on the front end that responsible, trustworthy, predictable kind of uh, emphasis. Um, 
we recently partnered with the Future of Privacy Forum, which is a, a leading think tank on emerging technologies in the US, because our hypothesis was that if you looked at how people are implementing HR AI, there was kind of a, a, a pretty big fat part of the curve where pretty much everyone agreed on a number of practices um, that are becoming the norms. For example, no one we know is using HR, AI in the HR context and saying, hey, let's keep it a secret. Don't tell anyone what's going on. Everyone is being transparent. Everyone's being upfront. Everyone things people deserve to know in these technologies. Well, that's a, that's a best practice. That's So we worked with the Future Privacy Forum to wrap our arms around what those best practices are, and we found an unbelievable amount of consensus when it comes to bias and discrimination mitigation, when it comes to privacy, when it comes to transparency, when it comes to explainability. Um, and so we packaged that into a, a set of practices that were, we were joined by with uh, LinkedIn, uh, ADP, and Indeed as well, some other industry leaders when it comes to these issues. And that's what we're sort of putting on the table not only for policymakers to look at, but also anyone that's starting to think about how to implement these technologies in a responsible way.